everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're gonna make an Easter treat that's a true retro throwback. I'm gonna show you how we make this delicious jelly nougat that's very reminiscent of a childhood treat of mine. I can't wait to show you how this all comes together. Today we're gonna make a delicious Easter treat I'm calling retro jelly nougat. Now, for those of you who are my age, you might remember when you were a kid, you used to go to the grocery store with your mom and there used to be the Brock's Pick-A-Mix Center over by the produce where you could pick your mix of all these delicious candies and just put them in a bag and they sold them by the pound and they had the butterscotch discs and the cinnamon discs and chocolate they had stars. the chocolate stars and the little um, flavored caramels and my favorite were always the jelly nougats. And the jelly nougat is really a take on an Italian tree called tortoni, which is a boiled sugar nougat that usually has some sort of fruits or nuts in it. But this is really a throwback to my childhood. And when I found the recipe in my Facebook feed over Christmas, I had to make it. And I did make this as Christmas treats to put in my Christmas gifts this year. And everybody loved it. It's so simple. It only takes four ingredients. And I know you're going to love it if you know what I'm talking about. So, and I've made it a couple of different ways. So I know exactly how to tell you to do it so that you won't have any problems. Now, what you're going to start off with is 10 cups of mini marshmallows. This is uh, about two 10 ounce bags of mini marshmallows. You're going to start off with two uh, packages of white chocolate chips. This is about four cups. You're going to use a half a stick of butter. And then the recipe calls for two cups, but I'm clearly using more than that because I'm using four boxes of dots. Now, when I ordered my groceries, I ordered the original dots, which is what I used over Christmas, the bright green, red, yellow um, dots, but they were out, so they gave me the tropical ones. But these are pretty and they're perfect for Easter. So you use what you like. I don't recommend that you use sugared gumdrops here because I feel like this sugar is just gonna make, I mean, we're already making something sweet, but I don't know how the sugar is gonna react with the recipe. So. If you wanna give it a try, go ahead and give it a try, but no guarantees, I don't know how it will turn out. So, I said I tried making this a couple of different ways, and the first way I tried doing it was on a pot on my stove. Do not do that, because it was just a mess, and the marshmallow burnt a little, and while my candy came out okay, it came out better the second time. We're gonna put the butter and the marshmallow in a bowl, and this is the biggest bowl I have that will fit in my microwave. And we're gonna put this in the microwave for a minute. We're gonna stir it. We're gonna put it in for another minute. We're gonna stir it and then we're gonna come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Our marshmallows I put in and I put the butter on the top. So when you do it, because this is for the video, I wanted you to see it. Put the butter in the bottom, then put the marshmallows on top. And then put everything in the microwave for one minute on high. And I usually just go one, one, one push the button three times and let it go. Then stir it down. It's gonna be super sticky at that point and not very liquidy. Put it back in the microwave for another minute, one, one, one. And then when it comes out, keep an eye on it because once it hits that last 10 seconds, the marshmallows like to puff up in the microwave because they're being heated internally and they might spill over. See how it got on the edge of my bowl. It didn't go over into the microwave, so I'm glad for that. Then when you take it out, you stir it down and it's gonna be this beautiful, liquidy, marshmallowy mass. So if you've ever made Rice Krispie treats and melted everything in the microwave, this is like kind of the start, only this is a ton more marshmallow than you would use for that. So now I'm gonna put the white chocolate chips in here. Give this a good stir. Now those marshmallows or that marshmallow cream, really, is super hot, okay? But I'm gonna stir this. It's nice and yeah, smooth. It is. We're gonna put these yummy dots because it's not jelly nougat without the jellies, right? This is where it starts to get super tough, okay? It's gonna get really stiff. Okay, you guys, I had to switch to my spatula because look, it got that, <laughs> it's that hard. So that wooden spoon bit the dust. Um, I'm going to spray this, even though it is a silicone spatula, I'm gonna spray it with some vegetable oil spray, whatever your favorite is. There's no 
right or wrong way to do this. Just get those jellies in there, okay? I'm gonna call that really good. I'm gonna spray my spatula again. And I have a nine by 13 pan. I sprayed it, then I laid a piece of parchment in there. Because I'm using a foil pan, it's gonna fold up around all four edges. That's what you want. Don't, um, don't cut it because you need that for later. Okay, now the tricky part. You want to get all of this goodness in your pan. Okay. Okay. It's messy, it's ooey and gooey and sticky. But I'm telling you, worth it. it's worth it. Now I'm gonna scrape the bowl the best that I can. You're gonna get these strings. You're gonna get it all over your hands. All right, now that we have all this goodness in our pan, I have this dough scraper, which really they're invaluable when you're doing something like this because it's not just good for dough. It's really good for sticky things like this nougat. This looks pretty, like Rick was saying, look how pretty it looks, and it's true, it looks really pretty, but the payoff comes later when we cut into it. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of parchment, but before I do that, mm -hmm. I wanna spray the parchment. You wanna basically spray everything that's gonna touch this, and go ahead and just fold it all in. I'm gonna stick this in my fridge for a couple of hours, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we cut it. This is gonna be perfect little Easter treat that you can have on your table or put in goodie baskets or whatever if you wanna make a homemade treat. I think that you're gonna love this. I can't wait to show you what this looks like when we come back and cut it all up. Okay, we have had our retro jelly nougat in the refrigerator for a couple of hours and it is well set. I personally think you should do this overnight, but for the purposes of this video, I really wanna get this up for you today. So we're just gonna go for it. So remember, I told you I sprayed um, the paper, and then I sprayed the pan, and then I sprayed the paper. So you may have to fry it out a little bit, and it is nice and solid. But you don't wanna to forget to spray because even though it's parchment paper, you might have a hard time getting it off and you want it to come off. Flip it over and just take the paper off. Now we're gonna cut it. So what you need is a very sharp knife or some sort of sharp instrument to do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the first one and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of it off camera. I have this big, um, Bialetti pizza cutter. We're just going to kind of eyeball it. And you want it to go all the way through. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. It's so festive and fun and you know, it's perfect for Easter. And then you can just go ahead and take your knife and cut it into like pieces that are two bites. You get a lot of candy out of this batch. So this is what it looks like when you get it all cut up and it's so festive and fun. I think this was just the perfect little treat to make for Easter. Really, it's, it's perfect anytime. It's a great party treat to make and give away. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this cut up and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like all piled up in a beautiful pile of little chunky, colorful cubes. So there you have it. Our jelly nougat is all cut up and ready to go. Now you can give this in little baggies or in little trays or however you want to do it. I do recommend however that if you're going to make this you store it in the refrigerator and you tell whoever you give it to to store it in the refrigerator. Um, it will keep for a much longer time if you do it that way and it will be much more enjoyable if it's eaten cold. Um, you can make this in advance and you can uh, make it in the trays and then before you cut it, if you wanna make it way in advance, you can wrap it tightly in plastic wrap and or foil, and you can freeze it for up to three months, and then you can take it out, thaw it, and you can cut it up and give it. So this is a really good make ahead thing too. 
There aren't too many candies that you can make a head like this, and this one is definitely in that category. So, I hope you give this retro jelly nougat a try sometime soon. I hope it brings back happy memories if you're just like me, and I hope you love it, and until next time, I'll see ya!